I got the feeling this light is going to drain the camera battery quicker, so we might have to make this shorter than our usual three and a half hours. <laughs> well, three and a half hours is a good runtime. That that light makes things look so awesome. I don't think I'll need to put out some sort of filter on. Cool. We have a new person. Hello. Your face is going to appear on the thing because every time there's a new person, there's a new title image designed for that type, just in case you ever appear again. Awesome. So, do something amusing for the title card artist. This covers our faces. We normally do. <laughs> We just saw Django Unchained. He gets very annoyed if you pronounce the D. <laughs> was that Will Smith? No, no. that was Jamie Foxx. Okay. That was Jamie Foxx? Uh -huh. He looked like Will Smith in one bit of it and I was like... He looked like somebody with a pointy face. <laughs> <laughs> what? He did. The, my facial <laughs> confusion is going to sound really racist in this vlog. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm just a oh. face blind motherfucker, so... I'm face blind for everybody, not just black people. I will state that at the start. Okay, so... Okay, well, you get your racism out now. Black people. You know, we should just kill all the white people. Oh, wait, that happened. <laughs> That's kind of the sum up of the movie. Every, like I said when we were coming down the steps, every single white person who died deserved it in the context of the story. What about uh, the saintly German? Okay, every single one the hero killed. Okay. He was killed by the one of the bad... He was killed by James Remar. He was killed by the worst actor to play live-action Raiden in a Mortal Kombat production. I think... Wait a sec, was that James I, I know that the poster says Don Johnson was in this, however, I never didn't spot him, and I spent the entire movie wondering, why the fuck did James Remar play the guy who was slaving Django at the start and then play Calvin Candy's sort of right-hand man when both of them got killed? Calvin Candy was Inception Man, right? Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. 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 So, so, maybe he's, one of those two was... Bradley. Maybe one of those two... Yeah, he's also got a beard. Um, maybe one of those two was actually Don Johnson, you know? I, I spotted Tom Savini and Zoe Bell and uh, Earl McGraw from uh, from Just Till Dawn, so I had to miss someone in the product in the cast. Was it just me, or were Candy and his sister fucking? Uh, it did seem to be uh, heavily uh, implied. It was it was a basic sort of a how do you make a villain even even ever more villainous even it's, though they it's it's, it's, villainy. Yeah, it's very, it's a trope. It's a very common trope. But it it's wasn't also necessary. They're also southern, and there's the stereotype of all the southerners fucking their cousins. Yeah, the cousins. Yeah, he, he aimed for his cousin and he missed. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, we didn't actually introduce who who everyone is. Hello. This is Robin, apparently, and this is Cipher. Hello. The um, the 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 fiction writer. And this is Batman. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, we saw. So yeah, again, we saw D Django Unchained and um. To all of the white people in America who made this into a minor media thing about, you know, ooh, is this film racist? Ooh, they're killing white people. Ooh, white, you know, white people, you know, are being victims of racism and stuff. Fuck you! Seriously? Yeah, there was. Of course. Yeah. They, it's... If you were, if you, if you compare... Okay, everyone who got killed in this, every bad person who got killed in this, well, well except for the ones who were bounty hunted, the main villains... Or slaving motherfuckers. Do not connect being white to make it an intrinsic part, you know, slaving an intrinsic part of being white. The people who complained that this was racist are far more fucking racist than this film was capable of. Also, whoever made the trailer I saw, what the fuck? I didn't see any trailers. I remember um, the trailer being pretty. I remember the trailer I saw was them being marched through the desert, being yep. whipped, uh, more slaves being marched through a muddy town, more whipping. Well, that did happen. More. More well, I don't remember the muddy town. I remember the muddy town, but I don't remember slaves being marched through it. More slavery. Oh no, that bit. All, all, all I saw in the trailer was shots of slaves being chained up in marched places. And I think they were playing some Johnny Cash over it. Yeah. That, have, Johnny that was, Cash was very into the flipping thing. I haven't actually hmm. seen the trailer, but I heard that it was basically Inglorious Bastards Black Edition. Actually, he's making that for his next film. It's going to be called Killer Crow, and apparently, it's going to be a cross between the two films. You got a, you got an all black unit of American soldiers go ape shit in Europe and decide to kill every single white person they come across till they get to Switzerland and to neutral territory and claim asylum. I, that's the, the rumor. I would much prefer if... if <laughs> no, it, is that legit rumor? Yeah, this is Quentin Tarantino's next film. Next he's gonna make, I don't know, the gay Jewish parade kill Hitler. No, see, I could live a, with that. With a name like Killer Crow, and he's doing this, he did the Jewish against the Nazis, he did this, the black guy, you know, killing off the, the southern slavers. 
And with a name like Killer Crow, I would really love to see a sort of a slightly more, a later on film, where it's a Native American killing, killing white people. I'd like that. You know, that would be good. I just want us to have our queer revolution and kill all the straights already. I actually was working on a screenplay once. It was it, it had a working title of Queer Core, but it was going to be changed at some point, which I might go back to at some point. But it was basically about a queer terrorist group. <laughs> and uh, they, they they start off just doing pranks and stuff, but then by the by the end of it, their plan is they're going to they they behead um, this sort of um, media type who's very very uh, virulently sort of uh, homophobic, heterosexist, etc. Mm -hmm. They've had them live on the internet, mm -hmm. and then they get sort of stormed and killed by the government. But then you, the epilogue would be sort of like a, a pride march the next year, and they've, they're the faces of them just before they were shot dead, you know, taken by the media, become sort of Che Guevara esque images. Cool. It, it was an idea I had, and I, I wrote about probably about a, qu a quarter of it. That has nothing to do with Django. Yeah, Should but I... it's it's the it's the howl of the um of the angry person at the person who was being shitty to them in in, in a broad sense. Yeah, I know. But normally we talk about the film there before we get into stuff like that. Some really weird humor in the mo in this movie. Yeah. The bit with the hoods just cracked me up. Because I also feel like that was maybe because this was the Ku Klux Klan started up uh, after... after the Civil War. So this was before the Civil War, and so I was thinking... I believe they started in Kentucky. It could also be sort of the joke of, like, this is why they have the hoods made this way, specifically, because otherwise, who can fucking see? Well, that's what they said. Next time, it'll be full regalia. Yeah, they're, 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 they're going to do it much better next time. Probably. Because they were going to be going out, and they all had bags with eyes cut out in the hoods, but the eyes were done wrong. Spoilers, by the way. Oh, oops. Oh, no, we're always do spoilers. Yeah, we do. Lesbian scene was good. The lesbian scene was good. <laughs> I think Tyler went to the toilet at the lesbian scene. Well, no, Tyler went to the toilet because of the lesbian scene, and he <laughs> found it very, very sexy. I always find the lesbian scene sexy. You always find Tyler going to the toilet sexy, too. <laughs> if you say so, dear. We tried to film yesterday, and it fucked up, but we're filming again tomorrow. Yay! Yay. In probably about 12 hours, actually. <laughs> hopefully this is like MAGFest all over again. Hopefully we'll be awake this time. Yay! Yay! Um... Yeah, I, I, I heard that there was parts of the film, you know, reviewers, again, American ones, um, uh, basically saying that they found parts of the film very hard to watch. Uh, the, like, the, 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 you know, with people, like, they're finding it mildly disturbing that, you know, it was being, that seeing white people being killed was funny, and I was like, no, white people getting killed is hilarious, dude. It is. I found bits of this movie disturbing, like when the guy was ripped apart by dogs. That was the bit, the only bit I found hard to watch. There's a bit where... Or the fighting where he... What, no, the you, eyes? What, you, you've never seen a, a slave exploitation movie before? I have seen several slave exploitation including one called Mandingo. Oh, I've got that on DVD. It's, it's, it's not very good, no. but it's got James Mason in it. I don't know why the fuck he's... James Mason... Okay, you got James Mason, who was... Who starred in the for Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea? The Disney version is basically playing Calvin this Candy. Version? Hmm? There's a Disney version. Yeah, from the fifties with huh. Kirk Douglas. But he's he's like he's like I can't do. He's like I can't do really the accent, but I get those mandingos <laughs> out there. I want to see them fight. Yeah, there was this really violent scene with the mandingo fighters. Like I'm a I'm an MMA fan. I've seen lots and lots of violence. Maybe not so much as that, but with the eyes. I've seen a guy's eyes poked out before. You see, I'm I'm the minority here in that I'm a wuss. I don't like gory movies. I don't like violent yeah, shit. Yeah, to be fair, to be fair, you didn't actually see a lot of violence in this film. The the, the violence you saw was the typical over the top gun violence. The other stuff was mostly kept off screen and yeah. through inference, which is what which worse. which is much worse. I've heard a lot of people saying this stuff's gory, but I have two types of gore. There's gore that is disturbing, like. Uh, I don't know, stuff you watch. Yeah. And, it, and then there's gore that is hilarious, like uh, that... Brain film, Dead. That, like Repo? The Headless Horseman film that I'm thinking Sleepy of. Sleepy Hollow. That's the one. It's just Like with the gore. head that rolls into the dude's crotch? Yeah. I find that kind of shit funny. That's the kind of gore I would place this as. The, I don't know. I thought that the yeah, the gunfight at the end, uh, you know, which I which I originally thought was the, near the the end. That was, <laughs> that was funny. Awesome. <laughs> that was that one guy getting shot. That was Quentin Tarantino had been edging this entire film and finally had an orgasm. <laughs> and we had the gratuitous foot shot. There's many of yeah. them. I only noticed one of them. Maybe I wasn't paying attention properly. You know, what I found weird. What? This it, 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 it's it, Samuel L. Jackson. Is sort of tied with the German guy as my favorite character because whenever he was just yelling and sort of being like the complete Stockholm syndrome subservient cunt that he Uncle was. Tom. Well, 
it, that's actually quite interesting. Uncle Tom in the book was actually a um, Uncle Tom. It, it, uh, nowadays, it's got a very particular connotation. At the time, it was actually considered a very progressive character. But yet, whenever he was being the complete cunt that he was, yeah. you know, for show, yeah. I thought he was very entertaining and amusing. But the, you know, it's the, but you know that actually finding him so amusing, being such a repellent and repugnant piece of shit. That that's what I found uh, a bit a bit unnerving about the film. I got so much secondhand embarrassment from that because, like, on the one hand, is he pretending or does he actually believe this shit? Probably does believe it. Yeah. It's um, you you know, th there are people in every sort of minority oh, who God, are fucked yeah. over who embrace the the fuck overness just to make themselves feel slightly better than their fellows. Okay, All yeah. I really got from that character is that one day I want to be rich enough to just have a guy that I hire to be funny and stand beside me. Yeah, but don't not make a jester. Him just like not No, more like a butler Ooh, a court jester. Ooh, a court jester. No, a jester who buttles. Just make sure that if he's a court jester he doesn't fall in love with your daughter and get hypnotized. And for whoever the fuck it is, uh, I, by buttling I don't mean serve me wine, I mean be the head of my household. Oh. Is Samuel L. Jackson 76? Because he had said he was 76. And Samuel L. Jackson, I know he's like, he's at least 60. He's older than he looks. And he plays older than he is, I think, in this. I love that bit where he dropped the cane and just like stood up straight like, Welp, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm actually quite, you know, he was like, I don't need the cane, I can, I can actually equip you. So it's like, I, I don't know, it was the guy, I think the guy was actually like a, a mutant of some sort, and he's like, yeah, I was just pretending to be crippled, I can totally take you, your head and, you know, Jimmy Fox. And to be fair, Jimmy Fox, if he did take on Samuel L. Jackson in a fight, he probably would lose. I Samuel think... L. Jackson would just sit on you. <laughs> no, he'd Yell. shout at you. Yeah, until your head exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I am motherfucking sick of motherfucking talking to motherfucking you. <laughs> I, I think that with that character, Scanners. what ended up happening was that some of it was put on, and some of it was not put on, and I think it got so wound up together that, so like, he keeps the cane with him the whole time until it's literally just him and the uh, Django character together. You should talk that way, the oh. camera's over there. Sorry folks, I'm not used to camera. But it ended up getting so wound together that it wasn't until it was literally just him and Django, and there's nobody else. It's also... Also, more films need to have a, 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 an unarmed woman getting shot in the head. I thought she was shot in the gut. Well, wherever she was shot, she was <laughs> totally killed. More well, whatever the hell, the bullet went that way and she went... <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, reality went bye-bye. <laughs> but more, more women, more uh, unarmed women need to die. It's oh. hilarious. So, Conor McLeod has grown up in Scotland. Yeah. And then Sean Connery comes along and teaches him how to use his signature weapon. And then they go around hunting a certain kind of person. Yeah. And then Sean Connery dies. He's killed by the Kurgan. Uh, Connor goes on a big adventure and gets his power. Is, is Django an immortal? Yes. yes. Uh, the amount of bullets he took in that stupid fight, he's an immortal. He didn't take them, he, missed, he dodged them. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm still thinking, I'm really reminded of Jeremiah Johnson, which apparently these two folks haven't seen. It's a western from the late 70s, I had to see it for my film class. I don't like westerns. It's pretty. Well, well that, that was that, a fascinating. That, <laughs> okay, okay, but basically, the. Wait a second, what songs by the Whites? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Racist <laughs> fucking computer! I don't have any music by the Whites. I don't! <laughs> <laughs> what, you're entirely rap? <laughs> oh god, that was racist. <laughs> White, you can get white rap. Insane Clown Posse is so fucking white. They have two. They have a. They have white skin, and then they have another layer of white on top of it. Dude, I've got Israeli hip hop. I was about to make a comment of W rap is in rap. Wow. <laughs> okay. But anyway, Jeremiah Johnson. Basically, a big theme of it that I was reminded of is that there's the character, who through a fit of circumstances that I'm not going to go into, ends up with a kid, and uh, an Indian wife. And then he has to go away for a while and come back, and sh they're dead because they've been killed by Indians. And throughout the whole of the movie, or by First Nation people, and throughout the whole of the movie, he's like, "I'm not gonna kill anybody. I'm not gonna kill anybody. I'm not gonna kill anybody." And then at the end, he says, "Fuck it," and he kills everybody. <laughs> I, I one thing I do like in films when it whenever it turns up naturally, whenever the only logical thing to do at the end of the film is kill everyone. I believe I, I expressed this ex this thing of mine, this view of mine, at the end of Confessions of a Trick Baby. I think it's wonderful when it organically happens that everyone must fucking die. I also... If the German guy had just resisted yes, the temptation... Yes! Seriously! 
Everything would have been okay, apart from Or at from least less sucky. The cunts would still be Or they could have just been all like, Hey, I want to buy Burn Hilda, here's $5,000. And then Django's like, I'll pay you back later. See what I was film. What I was <laughs> expecting was the fact that there would be he would have like a poison thing in his hand or something, something when he shake hands, it would kill the German guy, which would send Django into holy fuck, I need to kill shit now. But I guess also, were there any actual Brunhilde thingies? Hmm? You mean the track? Are you, are you thinking they should have used actually as part of the ring cycle? Or maybe just like allusions to it? They could have had a dragon. Maybe not. Well, actually, no. There's the trope of the dragon, so the big dude with the stick. Oh, no, he wasn't a dragon. The dragon is no, the... Butch. The dragon is the is the head boss guy. James Remar was the dragon. He wasn't dragony enough. He, he didn't do enough. <laughs> Apparently, Kurt Russell was originally in this. <laughs> but Kurt Russell, he, his part was, was, was joined with another character's part. And, uh... And he, he left the film very, very early, and right when they just first started filming. So I'm going to go, when I go online, I'm going to find out what part he was meant to have played, or what part his character got joined up with, because it was either James Remar or the guy who got shot in the dick a lot. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, you know a lot about history. You I'm know history. a lot about history. Yeah. Were, Ameri were Australian mining companies in um, the American West actually a thing? Because I thought they were. I don't... Well, uh, there was just, there was a lot of immigrants. And the... The you know, Texas was it's fairly central, um, but it's you know not central that way, but it's central. It's central as in it's east west central, so it's you're going to get immigrants from both sides. It was still just funny because of the fact that right in the middle we're hearing southern accents and southern accent boom. Quentin Tarantino being Australian. Oh, that was Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, the the one who got blown up was Quentin Tar Tarantino. That's what whenever you whenever you, I, I looked over you, I was like. What the fuck is Quentin Tarantino doing? I thought you were saying, what the fuck is Australians doing like, here? No. Wait. So the movie went batshit insane just after they killed the director. <laughs> Funny that. No, no, no that wait, it went before. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that went insane. Then they killed the director. Quentin Tarantino got a heat stroke. Pretend thought he was Australian. <laughs> went insane. Then the movie. Then the movie just you know Jimmy Fox took over and that's why he killed everyone. And that's also why he got that snazzy suit. Yeah. He's like. <laughs> We, we've got, this is the theory of the film. Because the, the third third is the weakest of the film, probably. It's fucking I'm weird. It feels completely different. The first third, it was kind of all serious and shit, apart from a few comedy moments. The second bit, it started to get funnier and suddenly, you know, super card powered gun nuts yeah. can take out a squad of 12 men on their own or whatever. But well, you could, but if you, it, it's easier to do, it's, 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 if you got the skill, you, you could, it's just very unlikely. Yeah, well, natural born gun skill is quite a rare thing and learning it takes... I've bit. played Assassin's Creed a lot, I could totally have taken out all of those guys. <laughs> I liked I've the, I liked also played Assassin's Creed a lot, my enemies don't line up and are to attack me one at a time still. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Only in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I, okay, Assassin's Creed... Okay, here, well, we don't use the Batman. We we use the Batman Arkham Asylum universe. We agreed on this with these three logs. Well, I'm using Assassin's Creed right now because this involves killing. Now, Assassin, although you can kill an Arkham if you know how. Um, the see with the Assassin's Creed. I finished Assassin's Creed uh, Assassin's Creed Three, and you find out that the main character's family was killed on the orders of Washington, and you know his people Spoilers. were relocated. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Spoilers for Assassin's <laughs> Creed. Washington didn't mean to. I really think they should, after they discovered that, they really should have had a bit where it was like, go to Philadelphia and kill all the Founding Fathers. And then you discover it's a dream. That would have been so awesome. It was just a random level. But, um, they didn't do it. But afterwards you discover also, like, you know, your, fa your, your people, like, their land has been given away to this guy by the Congress and they left. And so your character's like, I've helped America win its independence and they completely fucked me over. Oh dear. So I'm like... I'm like, I'm finished the game now, so what my entire thing is, I find it really fun just to run around colonial America, but being like an avenging character and just killing American soldiers for vengeance. So it's like, I'm totally into the mindset of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it has a very much like, fuck y'all, I'm sick of you idiots feel to it, which I can completely sympathize with. Although, uh, one thing that, okay, the movie got lots sillier towards the end. So the actual violence that is done to Django, you know, the, the, you know, all that is treated very, very seriously. There is a possible unintended consequence to, uh, um, unfortunate implication to this is that that's real. The vengeance is silly. It's a fantasy. This is not meant to be taken seriously. How that, however, that is supposed to be taken seriously, which is a possible unfortunate, it's, it's the same the thing. The entire movie was a whipping pain and just hallucination. Uh, no, no, it's, it's like, it's like Quentin Tarantino, uh, but it's, it's the unfortunate implication is that 
the although because it's a historical piece, this vengeance did not happen, so maybe that's the point, and therefore that's why it's a fantasy. But it's basically saying we don't take the idea of of slaves getting revenge seriously. It's that that, that it, there's something intrinsically ridiculous about it, and it's it's a possible unfortunate. It's the same sort of thing you get in uh, Israel Luna. Israel Luna? Yeah, Israel Luna's Ticked Off Tries With Knives, which is an absolutely fucking awful film, which I'm going to do a review of. I need to but see that. It's, uh, it has the same thing. The initial attack on the main characters is very deadly serious. The ending is done as a cartoon. And it basically reinforces the idea that this, that the, the, you know, the idea of revenge for these characters is a fantasy. It will never happen. And I can see possible problems with, with this, the, with the, subconscious message of this film because of that. See, the th I think the reason that they didn't make the other violence so cartoony is because it can come across... I think they're worried about offending folks, kind of. Like, saying, oh look, isn't this funny? We're seeing somebody getting whipped to death. Or also, it's really like hard to make flogging cartoony unless you include some reference to something. Or like... Have Whip it, Devo, or it's a minion covering. You know. Did <laughs> I do this in my videos? Or yeah, they're wearing but... pink flamboyant high top boots. If um, the hypothetical, if they if they'd done the whole film, you know, the, all the Django's Revenge, and I think it would have worked better if if that was done as deadly seriously. That he, that his vengeance was just got serious, and freedom. Also, the horse learned dressage at the end. What the fuck? What was what was that? That was that was something that you have to train a horse very specifically to do. The rider really doesn't matter in that. Maybe the horse already knew it. <laughs> Well, then why was it doing it? Maybe he picked that horse up and it was the, the woman who was shot's horse. Oh, that's... Oh, I thought it was the cart horse. Was her name Maybe. Lolita? Uh, something like that. Lolita. Lita, or, or Lola or Lita or... Also, that... You're not in shot anymore. Thank Maybe. you, dear. <laughs> so that... You two could totally make it mess with perception to make it look like you're trying to eat me. <laughs> um. <laughs> also... Was that club, like, that club they were in in the beginning with the Mandingo Fighters, was that like a fetish club or something? Because it oh, said Cleopatra Club and I saw no, a lot of fancy dressed women. I think it was, uh, it was just a high, a high class type thing. I don't think it was a brothel. Oh no, I don't well, think it was. a brothel, but like a... club. I thought it was just his private rooms. No, but it said outside Club Cleopatra and there were a lot of um, black women who were dressed really fancy. He, I think he possibly owned it. Huh. Yeah, because it, they went in and they're like, oh, Monsoir Candy oh, yes. is in the Cleopatra suite. He has oh, a, he's in the, he's in the Julius Caesar, Caesar, but there's oh, the Julius Cleopatra Caesar thing in the very beginning. But the Julius Caesar, there wasn't anything to symbolize Julius Caesar in it. I no. think it might have something to do with the same way that even though he's a French file, he hates, he can't speak French. Yeah, but why, why, why call it Julius? Because it's related, Shakespeare. No, not Shakespeare. What am I saying? Well, I know Shakespeare and Cleopatra were, you know, not Shakespeare, sorry, Cleopatra and Caesar were a, were a couple, but there was nothing to symbolize Julius Caesar in that room. Because he just wanted the name of the room, because he was, I think it was maybe, to, maybe we're just... he conquered Gaul, there you go. Or maybe because we're just reading too much into it, and they just wanted to show that the guy was obsessed with Cleopatra. He wasn't obsessed with Cleopatra, he was obsessed with France. Mm. He wasn't obsessed with France, he was obsessed with being called Monsieur. No, it's like he had his maid speak really bad French and had her in a French maid outfit. Yeah, he was obsessed with France. Okay. He wasn't very good at it. He was also obsessed with black men stripping naked and beating the shit out of each other. But so were Turks. They wear leather trousers and oil themselves up while they do it, and it's consensual. And it's totally not gay. Ask any Turk. More power to Ask any man. boxer. Or wrestler. <laughs> they don't do the oil in leather shorts. <laughs> not, well, maybe not in the places you go to. <laughs> 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 um, okay, Spike Lee uh, got, you know, saying, we went and yelled about how he would never see Django Unchained because it insulted, you know, the, you know, the, you know, his forefathers. And on one level, I can definitely see why. Well, you know, I can definitely understand the, the, his point because here we have a white guy telling the story of how a slave escapes and killed all, kills all the slavers. The thing that made him break was also it was the death of the white German dude. It's like you saw. Uh, no, he, he didn't just escape, break there. He he was totally fucked. He had to fight. He had to, He didn't have a choice. Because one stupid idiot can keep his temper. But with um, if I can understand why Spike, Spike Lee's point on that, because imagine uh, okay, all LGBT here. Imagine a, a straight, sexual uh, you know filmmaker decided to make, do a movie where say 
and Jewish as well, uh, and, and a Gentile one, decided to do some sort of a Holocaust film where all the people in a concentration camp make it a gay Jewish, I don't know, uh, organ player. <laughs> who uh, decides to, who basically leads a rebellion inside the camp and kills all the Nazis and basically, and, and escape. Well, basically every queer story so far that's actually done by mainstream is done by straight folks. I, I well, well the, the, big, the big ones are, yeah. But just imagine, it's got this, the, you know, the idea of, of another group uh, taking, uh, you know, ad adopting your group's trouble that's happened in the past, the p bad things happened to them, and sort of giving it a happy ending that it didn't actually have, and I have. I can understand why he's annoyed. I just wish he'd seen it before complaining about it. Mm. I enjoyed the movie, actually. Oh, I did as well. It was very good. Mm. We, just, we hadn't said that so far. I didn't hate it. I mean, it's not really a me kind of movie, but I don't regret saying it. I, I'm glad that Quentin Tarantino has started ripping off more and more, you know, interesting films rather than just crime movies. I don't know. I was very reminded of White Dog at one point. Um, the premise of the movie. Oh, the white dog. Yes, I've seen that. The premise of the movie, the white dog, is that uh, there's a dog that's trained to kill black people, and the dog is pure white. I was like, that's a white dog. Yeah, it's white. No, it's trying to kill black people. But anyway, that was racist of me as well. Uh, but at one point, he's training, he's training Django to kill snowmen. I see undertones here. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, with beer bottles. Yes, white men holding beer. It's a hillbilly. <laughs> it's a hillbilly man. Yeah, but like, what about the? beer bottle where the crotch would be. Or where well, the dick there was a be. lot of dick shooting in this movie. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I winced a lot. Hello. I will say the scene where he was upside down and the guy was oh, holding God. his dick was slightly homoerotic. <laughs> I didn't see it as homoerotic. I saw it as, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Also, it's just like, dude, there was a scene where he was about to get gelded and we get a shot of his testicles and, like, half the theater starts laughing. Yeah. They were very veiny. I think he might have oh, some sort of... They, 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 they didn't expect to see Jamie Foxx's testicles. To, it, was, it was rather unexpected. Yeah, well, little blonde white girls aren't Laugh allowed to laugh at Jamie La Foxx's testicles. <laughs> La La laughter is a natural reaction to seeing something unexpected, whether you find it funny or not. I spent to... No, 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 I'm not weirded out by nudity at this point. Well, the, 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 I don't think they're weirded out. It's just That's they didn't snickering. expect it. It's like... Um, Laughter, it's, laughter is just one of the ways that we deal with things that we don't understand. Um, the, th the current theory about laughter is that your brain sort of plans ahead for what it thinks is going to happen. So, you know, the classic joke thing, okay? Knock, knock, who's, who's there? there? And then you give an an your brain already comes up with an answer what you think it's going to be subconsciously. And then whenever, you get, whenever they give you the answer that you don't expect, the, the energy sort of from, from expecting that thing it sort of gets fucked around because it's completely different, so therefore you no, laugh. Knock, fuck off. And that's, that's, that's the current theory as to why laughter happens. So uh, I'm thinking that them seeing them suddenly there, they, didn't, they, they, they had ideas what the next shot would be, and that's not what it was. I don't and know. So that's why the, they laughed. The between the legs shot where you could just see the tufts of tainted hair <laughs> in front of your man's face. Did sort of make me go. What an interesting directorial decision. Well, it, 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 it's supposed to be a spaghetti western. Spaghetti westerns have the between the legs, you know, shots. And this was an upside it's, down between yes, the legs. Oh, yes, he was hanging upside it's, down. It's a reference to it. It's also a reference to quite a lot of porn. <laughs> Everything is a reference to quite a lot of porn, maybe, if you look at it the right way. Maybe, but the, the choice of that one, it was, <laughs> it was a definite echo to spaghetti westerns. I, I just didn't need to see taint hair in front of a guy's face. You love to see taint hair in front of a guy's face. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, the spaghetti western knockoff. <laughs> Unexpected dick will always bite you in the butt. It's not a knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm going to think of other things that I could have said whenever this ends. Oh, we always do. No. I, I, I like the hat. I like that he went batik for the hat. I think the hat was the most important character. <laughs> I like the horses. Well, they went through a lot of horses, and also they rode them to death. <laughs> yeah. Right when the film was over, there was this giant, no horses were harmed in the making of this film. <laughs> oh, apparently the scene where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio gets his hand cut was actually, yeah, the hand, it was... The hand cutting actually happened by accident, and he stayed in character, and uh, that that the rest of the films were sort of affected by it. Apparently, from that, Brett. that was another scene that felt very out of place. Uh, it, there was a lot of stuff leading up to it, uh, but Leonardo DiCaprio suddenly being that violently and that scarily angry in the middle of this 
film, it was suddenly... He doesn't actually have evidence of any of this. Oh no, but it, it, it was... You know, no, I mean, the, the, the yeah, he, he gets angry about something, but he doesn't actually have evidence. Sure, he trusts Samuel L. Jackson and what, but... Oh God, Samuel L. Jackson tells you somebody's fucking somebody. Do you believe Samuel L. Jackson? Unless he's playing Miss Windu, in which case you tell me shit and go away. Well, I actually, I kept expecting Leonardo DiCaprio to start, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, to start basically like snap and kill everybody because he seemed to be playing the character as the demented southerner. Although the, not, the stuff about phrenology cracked me up. That, that was awesome. Yeah, it was just one of Quentin Tarantino's typical, I'm going to talk about pop culture, but because it's like 1859 at that point, I think, so they're like, I'm going to talk about pop culture from there. Phrenology. Oh, although from what I read about the, the, this thing that Samuel Jackson what said, not to, Leonardo DiCaprio said, that one of his, that his character actually, uh, that's what different about him is that he sees that black people, that African Americans are equal to the Caucasians. And that's why he's he he wants to keep them enslaved, which I did not at all get from his character. But apparently, that's one of the things he was going for. Yeah, one in every ten thousand. I'm not going to say that word is special. They're all equal to us white folk. One in every ten thousand is almost equal to a white folk. And then he sawed <laughs> open the skull and was pointing to these special dimples. Boom doesn't make that noise when you saw it. I'll take your word for it. Does he have more of those skulls, you know, from people from his childhood, or you know, just on 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 a couple of words from Samuel Jackson, he gets this guy that his that raised his father and grandfather and, and him. just saws him in half, or uh, you know, was it anyone and he just made up a story? No, they did comment on how long he'd been away, so maybe he went and dug up the fucking grave. <laughs> no, I think he held on to it. He had that special box for it, like to set the skull out, mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the Victorians were weird when it came to dead bodies, and so they were technically Victorian. Um, I have to say, what is it with complete scumbags in history having really good sense of style? Cause, okay, southern rich folk, really good outfits. Uh. Nazis had really good uniforms, stylistically. Romans, really, really good, you know, stylish. British Empire from the Victorian era as well, really, really stylish. What the fuck? It's like evil breeds looking styly. Maybe it's the fact that because... There is a secret bit of our id that wants to be evil and so latches on, or maybe no, I'm just it looks good independent butt. of that. What am I looking at? The camera, hopefully. First, but you tell me not to look at the camera. No, no you do. Face it. Because the the microphone's going that way. You look okay, down sorry. the lens and you tell it that you. Because the audience is is watching us. You make that camera your bitch, <laughs> and the audience will fall in love with you. <laughs> the um, but I, I don't think it's got anything to do with the id. It's something to do with the fact that they did bad things. I was it's being just, silly. Oh, okay. I just think the best stylistic people are if they're growing up they're trying to be good and just people are like, eh, fuck that shit and they're like, well fuck this, nobody likes my style, <laughs> I will take over the fucking world and everybody will like my fucking style. Possibly. I think it's also like when you're high in power you can get the best. So, like, That's another possibility. weren't the Nazi uniforms designed by... Hugo Na Boss. Yeah. The, um, Something I did I, not know. As a completely, uh, completely side thing to the film, but connected to this, I think the Doctor should dress like a Southern gentleman, at least one incarnation, or possibly uh, like a Southern uh, riverboat gambler. Like Colonel, like Colonel Sanders. No, 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 no. I'm thinking more of uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio, Django at the end type look. Not, not the Colonel Sanders. There was a dude like who's dressed like Colonel Sanders. Yeah, no, not him. Not that look. Not, I not, will say my favorite. Yeah, that's crap. That, that's like that's like the terrible version of the southern. That's like the nouveau riche. Something sort of I actually would wear out would be the blue clothes he picked out from the slave <laughs> shop. Still love them. That that gal says to him, <laughs> "You're free." You chose so, to wear that. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's at one point uh, he, it's he, he's discussing his freedom. It's like you have to play a character. Now pick your costume, and the guys in the clothes shop's like, "I can wear anything I want." And he's like. Yeah, you can wear anything. Else. And he just walks out in this flamboyant, over the top Little blue, Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> yes! blue dandy suit. Little even, Lord Fauntleroy. Even his blues were even his blues were shoes. Even his shoes were blue. I like blue. that's actually the sort of outfit that uh, that um, Oscar Wilde would wear, unironically, and people wondered. Hmm. People were com were surprised. It's like Liberace all over again, or but before. I'm surprised there was no Vivaldi playing at any point, or would that be too over the top? Well, they had Deus Airy. Oh, I didn't hear it. Though. At one point, you're German during man. the during the Ku Klux Klan. Oh. Uh, At one point, your German man shouted exactly what I want to shout, because we were being they were doing the whole thing of showing us horrible images murdered in the film, and they were playing for release by Beethoven over it, 
And I was just like, stop fucking playing Beethoven. Then he stood up and shouted exactly that. Stop, stop playing, playing Beethoven! Beethoven. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play Wagner. Yeah, the... yeah. <laughs> but I was like, this is a clockwork orange moment. We're watching horrible scenes of people being ripped apart to By Beethoven. <laughs> yeah, this film would totally be improved by a Wendy Karloff soundtrack. She did Switched On Back, and she did the soundtrack for The Shining, for Tron, and for Clockwork Orange. Yeah. She'd be fucking, that would be fucking amazing. Oh, by the way, the soundtrack of this, not as good as most Quentin Tarantino films. Um, I had no problem with the rap being used, but I just wish he'd kept the rap for, you know, during the, big, the final gunfight. You know, the whenever he was after the German guy died, I wish they'd kicked in with the rap then. The, the one having rap earlier sort of ruined the fact that this was like they had going rap on crazy. A, they had a rap. Okay, everything was sort of westerny with the sort of west... Like, and Luis Bakalov. A little bit of sort of rocky type western, but that's to be expected with any ship in the modern era. But just, there's also one helicopter shot over the desert as they're riding along. Nothing much has happened, it's just rap, and I'm like, well that's an odd choice. Yeah, at least at least the one later on during the gunfight, it's like, okay, we've gone, you know, we, we have gone completely demented, and it sort of added to it. Mm. Yeah. The, um... But yeah, I, I stand by, Wendy Carlos soundtrack would be fucking amazing. It would be like, um, the Brandenburg March on a Moog. Moog. A Moog, yeah. What's a Moog? A Moog is that an early synthesizer. synthesizer. Uh. Basically, they sound a lot like Muzak, but in, in the 60s. They recently released a guitar. Uh, well, I'm thinking 60s Moog, original type. Uh. They were releasing a guitar, apparently. Hmm. With like a synth pad on it. Interesting. But, um, yeah, Wendy Carlos is amazing. I enjoyed it well enough. We, we do tangents. I, th I, I, they never showed us a haircut. Yeah, he was all like, um, who's, who's got a hair like, he's got like Albert Einstein hair, or, but you know, young black Albert Einstein hair, and then suddenly he's all head shaved and all, which, is, I don't know, was that period authentic or not? I don't think so. I don't think so. And if they did that to his hair, why the fuck didn't they sort out his beard? No offense, but you don't go from, I'm all scraggly to, I'm all clean and shaven and shit, except I have a scraggly beard. Well, that was slightly more period authentic. Yes, well. You could have given him a sort of a massive, you know, epic handlebar mustache. The Colonel, the Colonel Sanders guy, actually, his his facial hair was epic. Yeah. I love the, the sort of the three pronged facial hair, the sort of thing that Colonel, that General, General Custer had. That is my favorite type of facial hair, except for possibly the one that's the full beard without the chin, which is like button chops. Well, no, with a mustache, it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't need no fucking chin bit. <laughs> Speaking of random things that I, I expected this, but it didn't actually happen. Samuel L. Jackson's character at one point pointed to Django and said, Who dat nigger on dat nag? Why did nobody make a nig on the nag reference? Seriously, that's a thing, what? nig on the nag. What? It's about exactly what you think it's about. A uh, black person on a horse? Yes. Maybe that was the what? reference. Nig on the nag. Maybe that was the reference, dear. I have, I, stop being racist. I am not. Well, we've established in these vlogs already that I'm racist. <laughs> if, if in their vlog, if Brad in his, in his vlog for Django Unchained can start a meme that one of his friends is a slaver, we can start a, a meme that you're a racist. I don't want to date a racist. Why do you think I wear these blue glasses? They make everybody skin peeler. <laughs> Uh, Chinese people look white. <laughs> wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Insane Clown Posse song. Um, fuck skin colour, everyone's blue. Now what you all you bigots gonna do? Instead of their race, you'll go after their size. That's why I gotta cut out everyone's eyes. Honk, honk. So, th 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 you are a living Insane Clown Posse song. Motherfucking Miracles? No, not that one. No, this is one. I can't remember the name of the song. Oh, I was... It was a real one, though. It was from one of the early albums. I was making a Homestuck reference, because that's all I know Insane Clown Posse from. And at one point, they get elected for president. Me and I, me, me and Rap Critic are doing Insane Clown Posse videos. Now, so, so, but... Yes, you are a living Insane Clown Posse video. That's perhaps the worst thing you've ever said to me. Which is <laughs> ironic, considering I'm going to wear his wake up. I'm going to start calling you Gamzy. I'm going to start going over here. <laughs> Actually, no. Spoilers. Sorry. Sort of. Yeah, people totally entered into the, watching this video. The agreement of watching this video expecting spoilers for something completely unrelated. <laughs> yes, they expect a spoiler for Django. Not Assassin's Creed 3 and Homestuck. <laughs>
Oh god, now I've got to score something. Uh, Bruce Willis was Die Hard all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but the, the um, the Sixth Sense is actually a, a, a sequel to Die Hard. It went a bit weird. He got shot dead in Die Hard Six. That's why it's called the Sixth Sense, and it's called the Sense because it doesn't make fucking sense in co in continuity. <laughs> Holy shit! I just invented a new fan. I saw the little light bulb. Also, Groundhog Day was a Truman Show situation. Groundhog Day was originally done because this this pagan woman who was an ex girlfriend of Bill Murray's in the in the in the original script they cut the scene out and she did the spell and he was ended up in it. And because they cut that scene out, you got a bunch of people claiming it's a metaphor for Buddhism. No, gr Ground, uh, Groundhog Day didn't actually happen like that. They they sort of put him in a Truman Show bubble and just made him think that because it was in VR situation. Yeah, it was it was a punishment for being a wanker. So they do that to everybody who's a wanker? No, he, uh, what do you call him? Was just a, a special. Let's kill you and find out. <laughs> Don't kill all the Don't kill. Back. Don't kill me. Don't kill. Anyway, to sum up. Oh, what trailers did we see? Uh, uh, movie 43. That looks really bad. I'm surprised there's so many big name actors that I had respect for in it. That looks like Setzer and Freeberg bad. That, there were yeah. tits in it in a cinema trailer. I've never seen that before. I missed the tits. I must have been eating my nachos. What? <laughs> they were there for like 20 seconds. It was like an iPod dock with tits and kids kept putting their dicks in it and getting them shredded. Yeah, I, I heard them talking about it. I didn't see the prop. <laughs> yeah, no, this woman was like topless. Well, I was eating nachos, that's more important. <laughs> Since when? Since nachos. Since the inception of cheese that's not yours. <laughs> anyway, that was the only trailer we saw. Was it? Well, yeah. I think so, yeah. It was bizarre. We got... It's, it's 20 to 3. I gotta extract this. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, and we gotta be up for filming in about... A couple of hours. Well, I'm going to be over at the house at 11, in 11 hours. Um, but, um, Django Unchained was very good. It was actually the first Quentin Tarantino movie I saw in the cinema. I found it quite funny. If you're into uh, stupid, stupid movies with stupid, stupid gore, and you want them with a slightly more serious message, slightly, go see it. I enjoyed it well enough. If you're not really one for gory stuff or super serious stuff, I'd say go with a friend who wants to see it, otherwise skip it.